Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 20th, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week. Without a doubt, big moves happening in the sky now. Boy, is this a very special time. Now, the big news this week, without a doubt, has to do with the fact that Mercury is going retrograde on Wednesday. Now, this Mercury retrograde in particular is rather special for a few reasons. So one of the reasons is, is that according to the ancients, it is certain signs that certain planets really like to be in. And by contrast, certain signs that a planet may not necessarily like to be in. And there's a whole rationale behind this, given the nature of the planet, the nature of the sign, what it's able to bring forward. And it is the energy of Virgo that Mercury most loves to be in. It is in this sign that Mercury is able to operate in a way that is considered its very best analytical, insightful, uh, able to think clearly, able to understand that much more. But this is still Mercury retrograde. And the retrograde of Mercury is intimately tied with, this year, the retrograde of Venus. Now, I did speak about this dance between, or the reflection between Mercury and the Venus retrograde as well, two weeks ago. So I will link to that video below. But suffice it to say, there are some important things to be mindful of here. The retrograde represents mythologically a sense of not only going inward, but metaphorically going to the underworld. And this is important with Mercury because Mercury is one of the very few divine deities who's able to travel between different worlds and different realms in Mercury's case, rather freely, able to go to the underworld, able to roam Earth, able to go to the heavens as well. And when it is that Mercury is retrograde, this tends to represent a time when Mercury is able to take souls, travel with them to the underworld. But the underworld is vast. It is a very expansive space. And it's Mercury's job not only to accompany souls to the underworld, but also to make sure that they go and end up where it is that they're supposed to be as part of this next chapter, this next journey for their soul. Now, we understand these as metaphors, and that's important to remember because it is by going within ourselves that we're able to truly understand where certain feelings, certain experiences, what they're going to mean to us and where we are going to put them within ourselves. And this is a journey that involves searching for higher consciousness, searching for clarity, which is a necessary step on the path towards individuation, as Carl Jung called it, which is essentially making those parts of us that have been invisible to us, that have rested in the shadow of the psyche, bringing them to light, making them conscious, is part of how we ensure that those very inner motivations are not determining our actions, but rather we're able to more consciously choose whom it is we are and what it is that we want and what it is that we're going to do. This is a part of living with a sense of congruency, the different levels of our psyche operating together so that our choices are truly ours and not something rooted in our deeper wounding. And so Mercury retrograde becomes important as part of a spiritual journey. Any given Mercury retrograde does that. But I think the likelihood of us being able to recognize that's what's going on, that's the journey that we are on, seeking those places within ourselves, within our psyche, within our soul, making them conscious so that we can be more whole is a part of the undertaking of this time. Now, something I also want to uh, reflect on and that is the fact that this must be one of the more fortunate Mercury retrogrades that I have seen in a while. There are good things happening with this Mercury retrograde. And so on a more mundane, immediate level, I think a lot of us out there are going to feel as if certain opportunities we thought were gone, or perhaps we thought were gone for good, were never going to come back around, 
may just come back around at this time or something else even better could find us now. If it is a brand new opportunity, like something really out of nowhere, something perhaps you never even considered, well, you're going to want to be that much more mindful of the details and be that much more mindful of what it is that you're being told, what it is certain contracts might be saying to you as well. Ultimately, the real clarity does come together once Mercury goes direct. However, it's important to be mindful now that where it is that perhaps you were pursuing something, perhaps it fell apart, perhaps we were disappointed, or perhaps it was a very deep disappointment. What comes back around with this Mercury retrograde is likely to be better, and in some cases, better than what we had planned for ourselves. And that tends to be the way with retrogrades. There certainly are times when the universe invites us to uh, own our power, decide for ourselves the direction in which we are going to go, and to set our sights with clarity and to manifest. And that is one of the great gifts of being a human being. But there are times when we are encouraged to acknowledge that as a human being, our own perception might be rather limited, that sometimes the universe has something even better planned for us than anything we could have envisioned for ourselves. In fact, I would say that there are times when we put so much of ourselves into wanting to manifest something that we think is so big and so grand, but from the perspective of the universe, it's actually us playing quite small. And that the plan that the universe has for us is even greater than what we can imagine, especially when it is that we're setting out on manifesting something we have our hearts so set on. With the retrograde, we are invited to surrender and to question. Perhaps it is that we have overly invested in a particular direction rather than demonstrate trust that what truly is not just for the highest good of all concerned, that's one thing, but which truly is meant to carry us towards even more greatness, more happiness, more fulfillment than anything we could have imagined. Well, there are times that ask us to surrender to that higher wisdom even if we don't necessarily know where it is that it will take us. And so, as I said, this particular Mercury retrograde amps up the value of surrender that much more. And that is because we've got key contacts being made. Not only because Mercury in and of itself is in a sign it loves to be in, in the sign of Virgo. So direct or retrograde, there are going to be blessings here. But as Mercury stations in the sky this week, appears to be standing still. And it is so important to consider that when a planet is standing still, it is closer to the Earth than it might otherwise be. Its importance, symbolically, but also very literally as well, is that much more magnified and that much more heightened. While it is now, as Mercury stations, uh, will do so while hanging tight a conversation with Uranus. Now, this conversation is not precise, but it's almost precise. And I find that rather intriguing. The Uranian energy, and whenever it is that Mercury speaks to Uranus in harmony, I always think of that as good news. Mercury is the planet of news what we're talking about as a collective, what the media might be discussing or interested in or talking about as well. Um, it's what it is that we might be thinking about, the thoughts we're holding, the things that become more important to us. And with this Mercury retrograde in the sign of Virgo, and Virgo has to do with your actual lived experience, the smaller moments as you move through your life, as I spoke of at length last week as well as we dived into how important Virgo energy is as part of living a life that is authentic, that is true, that is of integrity. Ideas and desires and hopes and fantasies and what it is that you believe in a larger sense, all of that is well and good. All of that has its place. The sky does have 12 signs. It has 360 degrees. All of them have their role in the human experience. But it's a different thing to consider what 
You are showing yourself day in and day out in your smallest moments about who you are, about what you believe, and about what it is that you think is worth your very valuable energy. Our energy really is the thing that we have to give in this lifetime. Everything else at the end of the day is superficial. It's nice. Enjoy it. Absolutely. But there's something about our energy. As much as it can be infinite, it is also priceless. It is the most valuable thing that we can give to anything. Is what you're giving your energy to actually worth how valuable it is? That's part of this moment, asking you to get honest about that. But the trying to Uranus, wow, this is very exciting. I feel like this is great news, but it's almost like it's almost news, right? So it's this possibility of what really could be magnificent, of what is possible, of how much things could change in a real way for the better for so many of us out there. But the precise turning point may not be here just yet. This reminds me of a phrase, um, hurry up and wait, right? That's part of what I'm seeing here. And so, yes, we may have to, in some ways, hurry up and wait. We might have to respond very quickly and then told to be patient, to step back, to take a moment. This can be the promise of great fortune, the promise of very good news, but it's now that we get a glimpse. We're open to the possibility. But that doesn't mean that it's not still worth something. It's worth a whole lot. Now, Mercury will, on Wednesday, go retrograde. And will, over the course of the larger retrograde season, dance in supreme harmony with Jupiter. This is something I'm very excited about. So hold on, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But a key characteristic of this Mercury retrograde season is that Mercury will connect in supreme harmony with Jupiter. Already has once, will again in the days ahead, once we step into next week and beyond. And will again once Mercury goes direct in the middle of September. Uh, and then leave shadow towards the very end of September. I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But intriguingly, there is this dance taking place, which does suggest that Jupiter, with its possibility, with its massive blessings, well, blessings we thought were gone, are very likely to come back around in some way. There's every reason for faith, and there's every reason for hope. Now, also, I do want to mention as I said, with Mercury retrograde, well, Mercury standing still in the sky is when Mercury is closer to the Earth than it might otherwise be. Its symbolism is magnified, and that's true for any planet when it is standing still in the sky. Two other planets are essentially stationary this week. Uh, Venus, we'll start there, is beginning to slow down to a standstill in the sky. And will on Tuesday connect in a conversation of tension with Jupiter. Because of how slow moving both planets are at this time, it's like they're going to hold this conversation. They're going to remain within orb uh, throughout this week, next week as well. And it is going to be at the very beginning of the following week. September 3rd or 4th, depending on where you are on the planet, that is when Venus will officially go direct, and then shortly after will perfect another conversation with Jupiter. But because of how slow moving Venus and Jupiter are, it's like they're holding this conversation over the course of the next three to four weeks. And so we have the beginning of the station of Venus taking place now, which means Venus is at the height of her power. And if that wasn't enough, we've also got the beginning of Uranus. Uranus station. It is going to be next week, Monday, that Uranus will go direct. And so we are on the precipice of these massive turning points, but the station is huge. The station is where the tension is. That's something to remember with any given planet. 
but especially when a planet is station retrograde, because it's like we feel that tension building and then we realize it's about us. We're on that journey right now with Uranus and with Uranus, it's all about the truth. It's all about being honest. It's about being authentic. It's about realizing where it is you've settled for something superficial and where it is that just isn't working for you anymore. Now, whenever Uranus does change directions, there's a shock a minute, a surprise a minute. But I think a lot of those surprises very likely are going to be rooted in what we come to realize about ourselves. And the fact that Uranus is speaking in supreme harmony with Mercury throughout this week, staying within orb as we step to the very beginning of next week as well, I think all of this is very encouraging because it does suggest that the truth that we uncover, the truth that is revealed, even if getting there is tense, ultimately we're able to use it to our advantage. We're able to understand, we're able to connect certain dots that make all the difference that become a part of unleashing new ways of understanding a particular person, place, thing, or situation in our lives. Now, the energy of Venus and Jupiter, though, I got to say, that is overdoing it, okay? Whatever it is for you. And that's something to be very mindful of with Venus in particular, because it is the Venus retrograde season uh, that can bring with it a magnification of how you understand and use Venusian energy. So whether that is a magnification of love and romance and how you pursue it and the things that you choose to ignore because you so want to be in love, whether it comes to money, how you spend it and what you spend it on, or it could have to do with pleasure, what you consider that to be, how do you pursue it? This is where everything feels heightened. It can feel over the top. And this energy can be one of overindulgence as well. Now, there are certain overindulgences, not a big deal, right? Have at it. Enjoy. I love sugar. Yeah, if you're one of those people who love sugar, well, chances are this is where you're having the extra big piece of cake or however it is that you go in that direction. However, there are certain types of overindulgences that may have consequences that uh, are a little bit more challenging to grapple with. So that's something to be mindful of as well. For example, going on a massive shopping spree, but using your credit card to do it. Um, this is where that tendency, if that has ever been the case for you, that tendency could be high at this time as well. And so how you use this energy up to you. You can notice the inclination and decide what you're going to do with it. And it isn't about denying yourself anything. It's about realizing that there are actually higher forms of joy, of pleasure, of love, of understanding, of beauty, and how it is that you express your unique beauty. Enjoy this time because ultimately that is part of what... Uh, Venus square Jupiter says, yes, enjoy it. But chances are more of us than others are going to be inclined to over enjoy it. And, you know, if you weigh the consequences and you think you can do it, it's not a big deal to you. Or even if it is, you're smart about it, or at least you're making your decisions consciously. Well, then you really can't make a wrong choice. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, what we also have is Mars. Yes, there's even more to talk about here. Uh, it is on Tuesday that Mars will stand across the sky from Neptune. And then as Mars moves forward, it is going to be uh, either late Thursday in the Americas or Friday in the rest of the world uh, that we get Mars speaking in supreme harmony with Pluto. And so I have to say, Mars trying Pluto, oh my goodness, what beautiful energy. That is energy of focus, of power, of passion directed towards specific outcomes. Uh, it is energy of uh, really being able to knock any effort out of the park. And so this is energy to harness to our advantage. Uh, this is the energy of truly 
feeling like you can win, and then taking action and actually feeling like you did win as well as a result of the steps that you took. And so this is actually one of my most favorite celestial connections that does take place because it is about understanding that our own energy can be a force of transformation in our lives and the lives of others as well, but it keeps the focus on you. It's about you taking steps with faith, with a sense of how you can experience even more blessings and experiencing more blessings as well without necessarily trying to impose on other people. This is energy of empowerment. However, <laughs> I feel like however, that's a word I've said about three times now. Yeah, in order to get us there, in order to get us to be aware of and take ownership of our power, in order to help us to understand how important our own focus is, to take action on our own behalf, uh, we might need to have a moment where we feel decidedly not in control, where we feel not connected to the power of our own actions. We don't necessarily feel empowered. And so it becomes important to be mindful, especially right around Tuesday uh, with Mars opposite Neptune. If Mars trine Pluto is one of my favorites, Mars opposite Neptune, because of the uh, draining quality, the tiring quality of this, I'm so sorry to say it's not easy energy. It's energy of being tired, of wasting our energy, of our actions being futile in some way, of wondering why it is that we poured so much of ourselves in a given direction. But it is very soon after, as we pour our energy in the wrong direction, that we recognize what the right direction is for us. We own it. We claim it. We feel that much more inspired by our own ability to connect that much more deeply to the power that we hold and can wield. But in order to get to that awareness of the power we do have, yes, I do think there might be some out there who feel disappointed, especially by the actions of others. It might be as the result of what other people are doing that you end up feeling tired or spent in some way. Understanding what healthy self-care is, especially in the management of our own energy, uh, might be part of the lesson of this time. Now, the fact that this is happening almost simultaneously with Venus square Jupiter, an energy I spoke of just a moment ago, which is about overindulgence, well, I can't help but think that these energies might in some way end up working together. Um, the fact that they're happening so close to each other does suggest that on the one hand, we're overdoing it with Venus. And on the other hand, we end up feeling drained and tired as a result of overdoing it with Mars. And so what do you do when you see energy like this? Strive to ask yourself the right questions. That really is it. Get the questions ready in advance, whatever they might be uniquely for you. And those questions should always be a prompt towards understanding if this moment requires self-care and understanding what you actually know to be true about this given moment and what it is that might actually be a story or an assumption in your own mind that might not even matter especially now, but especially in the fullness of time. We can have a tendency sometimes to make something small way bigger than it actually is. And sometimes it's only in retrospect when we look back, we realize, wow, I wasted so much of my very valuable thoughts and energies and anger and passion or desire or time. I wasted so much of it on something that didn't even matter not just at the end of the day, but maybe in the moment as well. And so this is going to be an invitation to get those questions ready so that at least you're being honest with yourself and you can choose consciously. Because as I said, if you are making your choices consciously, you can't make a wrong choice because then you decide for yourself. Then it isn't about inner wounding uh, that is motivating what's really going on, even though you say you want something else something is happening. Well, look, some of that might happen, but it's an opportunity to reflect, 
and to get honest. And it's when we're able to be honest with ourselves that that act in and of itself is a reclamation of our power, our very valuable energy. There's this contrast playing out this week. As much as we have energies that say, surrender, accept, turn it over. We've also got energies that say, own your power. Choose the direction you desire to go and then give your all to it. But at the same time, stay open and stay flexible because it is very likely now that what the universe has planned for us is way better than anything we could plan for ourselves. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a valuable and meaningful astrological moment. Well, I do want to say that it is on Wednesday that the sun will move into the sign of Virgo. Happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. So on the one hand, that means Leo season comes to an end. Uh, and so that more fabulous energy gives way to an energy of focus and work and attention to the power of the present and the small moments as we move through our lives. We've already got some insight into this, given that we've had Mars moving through the sign of Virgo. Next week, we'll leave the sign of Virgo. Uh, Mercury retrograde is happening entirely in the sign of Virgo. So we're already becoming familiar with this energy. It's just that with the sun uh, comes more of an elated understanding. What are the actual blessings of focusing on what's in front of you to do? Well, ultimately, the blessing is peace. And it's a peace that's available to you simply by setting the intention to focus on what's in front of you to do and to be absolutely present and right here for it. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, Log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible rare programs set to take off this September. And as we begin this week, you've got just a little over a week left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate for this caliber of astrologer. Wow, is this a very special September. I am going to start with the one and only Rachel Lang. Now, Rachel is the author of Modern Day Magic, the book that you can get wherever books are sold. Now she's coming to Synchronicity University with Modern Money Magic. It is a five-part course on abundance, understanding it, seeing it in your chart, how to tap into it consciously. This is going to be a very special course and all of us by going through this course are going to learn practical insights and techniques to help you to align with greater prosperity than you've known before. What a very special topic and Rachel is the perfect person to teach it. Modern money magic. It isn't just about knowing the skills and what's happening, but it's also about how it is that you can work with your chart to make even more abundance happen for yourself. So you've got just a little time left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class to learn modern money magic from the one and only Rachel Lang. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents Kira Sutherland, one of the world's leading medical astrologers. Boy, is this course proving to be popular. Lots of people signing up for Kira's course. 
And this is a five part course in medical astrology as only Kira can teach it. Uh, and you've got this very limited time left to choose your tuition rate. Now, Kira never teaches at this lower rate, but she's doing it now for Synchronicity University uh, as part of our mission of making quality astrology learning and education available to the masses. So I hope that you will join us for Kira Sutherland. She's going to take you through not only being able to understand through technique what to look for in the astrology chart, but also understanding remedies as well, how it is that you're going to approach remedies from a place of different essences and so on, because she isn't just a medical astrologer, but she's a practitioner of many alternative therapies, including uh, homeopathy. So there's so much to learn from the one and only Kira Sutherland. Like I said, she is such a master teacher and her reputation just precedes her that so many people have been signing up for this. It may end up being one of our more popular courses. Uh, and so I'm really looking forward to it from the perspective of all the wisdom that she is set to bring, because really she's already brought so much wisdom to the field of medical astrology. Medical astrology at Synchronicity University taught as only the one and only superstar astrologer, uh, Kira Sutherland Ken. I hope that you'll check it out. I look forward to seeing you in class at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has an incredible speaker series coming up. This is so special uh, with these wonderful astrologers, uh, including one of our living legends. So I'm going to start with the one and only Richard Tarnas. We are so incredibly fortunate that we're going to get Richard Tarnas choosing to teach live, online, in person. And so you get to see Richard Tarnas in real time. Now, of course, as always, if you can't join any of the classes in person, it's not a big deal. You do get the recording. So when you sign up for a class, you automatically also get the recordings, which is great. This is going to be a recording that chances are you're going to want to hold on to. And so Richard Tarnas is uh, just a living legend, and he is going to bring a mythological, mystical perspective of astrology to his talk. And I'll tell you, you know that right now we have Choose Your Tuition Rate. It's always just a $5 a class. Now, even at $25, there's no place online or in person that you're going to be able to hear a talk from Richard Tarnas, except at Synchronicity University. And so for Richard Tarnas alone, I mean, he is such a huge superstar. Like I said, he is one of our few truly living legends, one of the biggest astrologers in the world coming to Synchronicity University. This is so special. We've also got another superstar astrologer as well, and that is Jen Zart. Jen is widely respected in the field, uh, and she is somebody who shines very bright. And she's going to be teaching on Mercury, understanding Mercury and Mercury retrograde and so much more as part of her talk. If you saw the interview I did with her, you know that she is an incredible speaker, and teacher. She has been on the circuit for a long time, meaning that she's been at lots of astrological events, speaking at some of the biggest events in the world. And so it's so special that we get to have her at Synchronicity University. My friend Natalia Maria, now she's not as well known in the English speaking world, but gosh, she is a brilliant Brazilian astrologer. And I met her in person. I spent so much time with her during my three months in Brazil. And she really gave me insights into my chart that were unexpected, that were so helpful to me. So I'm so happy she's going to be coming to Synchronicity University, teaching on uh, understanding different myths related to the 12 signs. So not the most uh, widely taught subject, but each of the 12 signs also has myths to them. She invites us to look at even more myths to understand the nature of the 12 signs. And then we have someone you've seen before, popular teacher, 
Cassia Kristoff. Now, Cassia is one of my favorite previous students. Uh, she is so brilliant, but she's so charismatic as well. So I'm so glad she agreed to be back at Synchronicity University. And she's going to be teaching on critical degrees in astrology, a talk that you don't want to miss. And so check out this incredible speaker series this September. You've got just a little over a week left as we start this week to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class an unheard of rate to learn from this caliber of astrologer. This is a hugely uh, impressive superstar lineup. I'm so proud and so excited to have these teachers at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And the Canadian Astrology Conference is coming up really soon. And you can join us live in lovely Calgary, Alberta, or online as well. Uh, as part of this incredible rare event, uh, we've got superstars from around Canada, yes, but we've also got international superstar astrologer. Oh boy, this is the one and only, the great Rick Levine. Now I interviewed Rick Levine uh, recently. It's not up yet on my channel, but be on the lookout for that. But what is amazing about Rick Levine is, uh, you know, as I was introducing him, he said, you know, you don't have to call me the great. Really is okay. I was like, are you sure? Because I always call you the great Rick Levine. Uh, and so we had a laugh and then he said, okay, go ahead, do it. <laughs> so I did. And he is just the loveliest person you're ever going to know. But he is one of the world's biggest astrologers for a reason, because he has made a contribution over decades he is one of our living legends, and he is going to be uh, a part of two very special moments as part of the Canadian Astrology Conference. So one is he's doing the keynote over the banquet. And so if you can join us for the full conference, we would love that. I'm the MC of the event, so I'm going to be around all weekend. And so, yes, if you are inclined, come join us for the entire conference. But if you just want to get the party and some Rick Levine. I get it. Some people just want to come to hang out with other astrologers. Well, it is the Saturday night banquet where you can do that. You get a ticket to the banquet, you get good food, and you also get to hear the keynote by Rick Levine. And he also has a post-conference workshop on the Sunday afternoon. And that post-conference workshop is available in person, but online as well. So you can see here, we have so many incredible astrologers, some big names as well. Uh, some that may not be known outside of Canada just yet, uh, but really have been establishing themselves. Truly lovely people. I've gotten to know them as part of interviewing them over the last few days. You can see those interviews soon uh, here on my YouTube channel as well. And so join us for the one and only Canadian Astrology Conference.ca. Join us live in person in Calgary, Alberta, or join us online. And the early bird rate, I think it's ending this weekend, so we really don't have a lot of time left to get a huge discount. Um, I hope that you'll join us. It'll be wonderful. And whenever astrologers get together, boy, is it ever a party. And uh, I just can't wait. I love it. It's really like a space where you can be yourself. Uh, speak your own language, the language of astrology. I don't know, sometimes when I move through the world, I can feel a little bit like an alien, like I'm seeing things mythologically and metaphorically in a way that some people may not necessarily understand, that when I am with a group of astrologers, it's like I'm just able to relax and be myself. I'm able to say like, oh yeah, Venus is doing this in my chart, and I don't have to explain it. It just is. It is understood. It is so healing to be in the presence of that. And so whether it is that you're anywhere in Canada or even the US, you'd be very welcome. And prices are in Canadian dollars as well, which means with the exchange rate, Americans are likely to feel a massive discount uh, compared to what other conferences cost. So yes, join us live, join us online, canadianastrologyconference.ca. Links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Something uh, kind of amusing to me anyways was uh, recently talking with the uh, people who came to me, the organizers, asking me to come on, uh, especially as MC. I said to them, of course I'll come on. Oh my God, I have so many gowns. I can't wait because you all know if you've watched me for a while, 
I love glam. Like I just love glam. Something about it makes me feel like myself. And so I remember like as a little girl watching my mom do her makeup and how uh, mystifying it was to me, how much I loved it, how much I admired her. And so it almost feels like continuing a tradition, but also it's play and it's fun. Anyways, I said to the organizers, I am going to bring the sequins. And they said to me, Nadia, this is Calgary, Alberta. You might be the only person in sequence within a 200 mile radius. And so when I was interviewing Rick Levine earlier this week, I told him this, that, oh, the organizer said this. And he said, I'll wear sequins with you. I was like, really, Rick? He's like, yeah, I'll wear sequins. So there you go. You're going to see at least two people wearing sequins at the Canadian Astrology Conference. So if that isn't a reason to join us, or you having an excuse to wear sequins isn't a reason to join us, I don't know what to tell you. Like That in and of itself is a party. Sequins means there's a party going on. But yeah, you can find a party all your own. Whatever you decide to wear or not, uh, you are very welcome to come to the Canadian Astrology Conference. But also, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for this moment with you. I'm so grateful for it. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.